everybody. Mmm. Fresh coffee. Anyway, grab your coffee. Come on back. We're going to talk today about what I feel is the best rig to own as a, a real nomad. Not a glam mad. A nomad. See you in a minute. Grab your coffee. Have you ever woke up and wondered what was wrong with you? You knew you wanted to be elsewhere, that there was more to life than the life you were living, more than the bills you were paying, the job you were keeping. Look to the horizon, to the sunsets. Your answer is there. Put your feet on the ground and take a deep breath and step into the nomadic lifestyle. You will not regret it. I love my coffee. <laughs> I'm just saying that's one's got my homemade vanilla creamer in it. So anyway, Mr. Mark, one of my viewers, would like to know my opinion on what what rig to have. And you guys, I, I've talked about the problems I've had with my rigs, and and how they're not meant, they're just not meant to be lived in. RVs aren't. And with that being said, let's get into some of the reasonings I have for what I feel is the best rig to actually own. It really starts out depending on how many people are going to be in that rig. If you're going to have two people, you pretty much need to go an RV. Just saying. You know, I know that when we have our mates, we like our mates, but the fact is, I know a lot of people. And most of the people I know, including myself, <laughs> I like my alone time. I like to be able just to go into a bedroom or into a room by myself and read a book and not have to force my mate or my friend to go outside if I was living in a van with somebody. So the first thing that I would say is common sense is if there's more than one of you, I, you, you need to go to a larger rig like a class C, a class A, even a class B. And class B's are very nice, you guys, but class B's are so expensive. It's like paying for a class A, <laughs> only a little bitty, <laughs> little bitty size. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, there's a lot of things that come with buying a class A, B, or C, especially if you're buying used. If you're buying used, you guys, I have told you to get that RV tech out there. But the reasons is is that my first rig, a classy, beautiful rig, and it was like a 2014. Unbeknownst to me, whoever had it before me, and I know who it was, they had thrashed the wheels and the bearings and the ball joints on that rig to the point to where it was a traveling death trap. And and we don't know doing a walk around if that rig is a death trap. I I imagine a death roll or what a bounce or whatever they call them could be in a van as well but I have to say that as a couple or a person traveling with more than one animal and a larger animal I think a class C would probably be your best bet now did I want a 30 foot class C when I got my no 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 it was much bigger than I wanted I wanted like a 22 23 footer but with that being said I had Chloe and my Chloe weighed about 77 pounds. She was a big girl. Chloe took up the space of one human. <laughs> I only weighed 117 at that point. And she, was, takes, she took up as much room as I did. So it really depends on what kind of comfort zone you're looking for. Are you looking for a shower inside your rig? Are you looking for a separate bathroom, a separate bedroom? You know, guys, I have to say, 90% of the time I fell asleep in my Class C on my couch. And, and it was a scissor couch, and I never even pulled it out. I hardly ever used the bedroom. But that was as a single person. If you're a couple, then I would say that you need to go bigger. Have I seen couples live in vans? I have. But I've also seen a lot of vans with couples that are not on YouTube anymore. So that's just enough to let you think about, eh, maybe it's just too crowded. Maybe there's not enough personal space. Just saying. My idea about an RV, and I have not minced any words, and I guess if you bought a million or two million dollar rig, the installation and the way it's made, it might be a better rig. But those rigs were not meant to be lived in full time. 
Now there are places like, I think it's called Thousand Trails, where you can buy a membership. You can stay in the park for three weeks, but you got to leave for seven days. That's how I met people when I was up in Cottonwood. People would come out of the Thousand Trails for their seven days, and they would park by me. These were some really awesome people, and most of them were winter birds. And you know, guys, they just add a special something to the nomadic life. They're only there seven days, and they're in and they're out, and they're loving, kind, good people. So if you're older, and you're looking at this lifestyle as a retirement, I would get a bigger rig. I absolutely would, and I would look into one of these club passes where you can pick a certain area of the United States or two to stay in at their RV resorts. Some of the RV resorts are on the ocean. Um, some are, uh, are in New York. It just depends on what zone you pick. So if you're an older couple and you're retired and you're looking to be nomadic in your RV, I would definitely look into something like yeah, those passports. I, I can't even think of the name of the company. I just know that they're with Thousand Trails, you guys. Now, well, let's get to the single person. You know, I have told everybody that I would love to be back on the road. And the fact is, is when I do go back on the road, as soon as I save enough money, I'm buying a van. And I'm building that van myself. And I'm doing that for one simple reason. I will know what's behind those walls. Because I've done a lot of research. I know what molds and what don't mold. I know what sweats and what don't sweat. Condensation is the first thing that will kill your rig. You're cooking in there, it's 30 degrees outside. What are you going to have? Condensation. Ain't no different than sleeping in a tent and breathing hot air all night. You're going to wake up to water on that tent, on the inside of that tent. So with that being said, I would prefer a, bit, a van. I would love a school bus. How cool would that be to build out a school bus, right? I know. That would be my next option. If I was to be able to afford a school bus, I would get not the great big one. I would get the small school bus and build it out myself. I've seen a lot of awesome builds on school buses. But my preference as a single female would be a van. I'm just saying. And the reasons are I can build it out. You guys got to think about the maintenance is a whole bunch cheaper. Now, if you get a full-size van, the mileage ain't going to be much different than an RV. My RV only got like 8 to 10 miles to the gallon, and that was with me emptying all my tanks before traveling, except for my gas tank. So you're only going to get maybe, I don't know, 16 miles to the gallon in a full-size van, but it's a lot better than 8 to 10. So... To you, Mr. Mark, I know you have an awesome personal build going, and I can't wait to maybe put the picture on my channel. But this is for Mr. Mark. He wanted my ideas in a video on what I think would be the best RV versus van versus school bus. You know, it's all what's in your heart. It's all what you see in your mind as being your ideal living quarters. Because what you have to remember, you guys, is whatever you move into is your home. And that's something the glam mads and scam mads don't tell you. That's your permanent home. Wherever you park it, wherever you open your doors, your home. You can't walk away from it. You can't get away from it unless you're like these glam mads that beg for money to stay in a motel room. So make it what you want what you want, what you need. Think about it long and hard. Don't jump into anything, you guys. You don't see me jumping right into a van right now. No. I've got four, like 400 saved toward my van. That's all. But I have gotten the stuff to go in it. But the point is, is that I want something for me this time. I want to build it out myself. I want it built to my specs. So take the time. Research everything. I told you about solar. I, I would not even in a van drill solar on the top of my van. Because if I want to park on the street and look like I'm, I'm not living in there, I don't want a, a rack up there, a hot water heater up there. I don't want, you know, solar panels because that's all dead giveaways. Just like my RV, my solar panel be pulled out as I need it. Just saying. Anyway, Mark, I hope that this 
gave you a little insight on on why I would buy a van. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. The tires alone, you guys, on a class A, B, or C are crazy priced. They're not like buying car tires. At least with a van, I would run a little cheaper. Oil changes a little cheaper. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. It's a lot cheaper to have the ball joints or the ball bearings or the brakes changed in a van than it is a six or 8,000 pound RV. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. I hope it's not rambling too much. It's not something I really planned on doing a video about, but I hope it's informational enough for everybody out there. Remember to love yourself today. Go do something special for somebody you love. Let them know what they mean to you. And have a wonderful day. It's still raining here. I love it. Peace out. Bye-bye.